My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Slay the Spire, specifically Mod the Spire. We are going to be playing with the same mods that we were playing with last episode, and going in for an Ascension 1 on the silent. Hello again, now. Uh, obtain a random common relic, or am I going to trade in my starting relic for a random boss relic? Hmm. Now, the Silent has a, uh, a bit of a tougher time taking on a bunch of elites early. Ooh. Actually, it looks like our maximum amount of elites is two. Huh. Usually, when you use Ascension 1, Ascension 1 being elites form more often, uh, you have like a three path or at least, like you usually have like a four path or at least a three path. Um, well, all of these pods are kind of garbage. A little bit saddened by them. All right. Go up here and then... Yeah, okay, cool. I know my path. I'll take the random common relic. Ooh, okay. Gremlin food. Whenever you rest, upgrade a random card. That is, of course, a replay the spire mod. I mean, I guess that turned it the best it could. But that's a replay the Spire mod relic. It's pretty good in as well. Makes it not feel like a complete waste of your time if you have to rest. Block potion for 12. We'll take a Terra here. I'm going to try and go with a more aggressive silent deck because I've had a lot of defensive silent decks recently. And TVH, they're not my jam. Like, I, I'm good at them, and I can play them, and I know how to build them, but that doesn't mean that I like doing it. At least not all the time. Should have used the strike first. Would have gotten more damage in. Didn't end up mattering, but these are the small changes that really help you out in the long run. Not going to take any of those. Ooh. All right, so we have two new relics in here. We've got Chemical X. Whenever you play a cost uh, a cost X card, its effects are increased by two. Oh, so anytime I cast something for X, I will be casting it for X plus two, effectively. Ooh, that would be really good with malaise. No! Burst, malaise, noxious fumes. This is... This is... Th 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 uh. This is a defensive shop. I don't even want it. Uh, we've also got a Durian. At the start of your turn, reduce your weak vulnerability and frail to two. On pickup, increase your max HP by five. So I guess if you are hit by like a large weakness, a large vulnerability or a large frailty, uh, the Durian is there for you. I don't know how many things inflict weakness, frailty or vulnerability of greater than two. I know that the champ inflicts three vulnerability on a certain hit. I know that the spherical guardian inflicts five frailty. That's that's actually it for the things that I can think of. So I don't I, I don't really see the use case for this. I'll be removing a defense. Ooh. Yeah, you're removing another defense. Trying to tend this deck aggressive. Game, game, please! I just turned down the defense. This, this is like I think the third run in a row I've had with the silent, where I started out with the best of intentions for a def uh, for an aggressive deck, and it was like, mm, how many defensive things can I give you before you buckle? This is a defensive relic. At the start of your turn, lose 15 block rather than all of your block. I'm going to upgrade the neutralize because against two of the elites we could be fighting, upgrading that neutralize is better. Yeah, this works. No, oh, another strike. This is going to be the best kind of hand that I can open up on, so let's go. 
open up on you like a fine French wine. I... So usually my idea of how to handle these fights, specifically the one against the Lagavulin and specifically as the Silent, is you need to attack with absolutely everything that you have at a very every available opportunity. But I'm going to try and keep my perfect right now. We'll see if I can keep it for long. Though. 25 and the enemy is going to lose its weakening. So I, I would need a better hand than that. All right. Well, we've got four block in the tank. So if I completely block this turn. Ooh, hang on. If I completely block this turn, I will be prevented. And then next turn, I have neutralize as well as three strikes. Exactly enough for the kill. Hell yes. Tough bandages. Whenever you discard a card during your turn, gain three block. That is actually extremely interesting because it turns a lot of cards that are otherwise eh, into... Woo! I'm not going to take any of these. Ooh, this is a this is an event from the Replay the Spire. In the mist, you see a twisted reflection of yourself. You struggle to keep your thoughts your own as swirling colors surround you. I love the lore of this event because it so neatly ties into other lore aspects that already exist in Slay the Spire. Specifically, it ties into the Oh, what's the name of the event? I, I know it's the lore event. That's what I know it as. Uh, but it is the colorless cards event. It's the Tesseract, the glowing Tesseract. So what is Sizzling Blood? No clue. Uh, if I lose Survivor and Neutralize, I can gain two other cards. Leap and go for the Eyes Plus. Oh, I love that it maintains the upgrades that you have. That's really interesting as well. So if I lose Survivor, which is gain 8 block and discard a card, I get Leap, which is gain 9 block. They both cost the same, 1. Uh, and if I lose Neutralize, which is 0 cost, 4 damage, uh, apply 2 weakness, I get Go for the Eyes, which is 0 cost, 4 damage. If the enemy intends to attack this turn, apply 2 weakness. The thing is, Survivor discarding a card actually gives me three extra block. So Survivor, when discarding a card, is better than Elite. So this is like a negative thing for me. Sizzling Blood, though. I don't know what it is, and I'm actually really intrigued to just try and go for it. There's also Wanda, which is transform and upgrade a random card. So if that hits Terra or Neutralize, I'm pretty sad. If it hits Survivor, I'm moderately sad. If it hits anything else, I'm okay with it. Obviously, it depends on what it gives me, though. Having an aggressive opening is so much about having extra cards on my opening hand. A sneaky strike, and it looks like I lost a... Strike in order to gain it. Okay. Toxic Egg, whenever you add a skill card to your deck, it is immediately upgraded. Handy. Very handy. Okay. I'll defend myself for that this turn because I'm going to be double striking the sentry next turn. Actually, I'll probably be using, yes, yeah, Survivor to discard a card. And then I'll Sneaky Strike. Sneaky Strike, by the way, is deal 14 damage for 2 energy. If you have discarded a card this turn, gain 2 energy. So we're actually really incentivized to go into a discard build, courtesy of having it and the tough bandages. I could have played a defense that turn, but I'm already fully defended, so it doesn't matter. Oof. Ouch. Like, I was already fully defended, and the amount of the amount I would have been left over with would not have been enough to keep energy for uh, calipers. To keep block for calipers, that is. I split my attacks there because now I know I'm two strikes away from killing the backliner. Mm -hmm. So I'm not wasting the damage from the neutralize, just throwing it against the backliner.
Sneaky Strike is a troublesome card. It's not particularly powerful, even when you meet the use conditions for it. So it's a little bit, uh, oh man. That vocalization in a card, effectively. Mercury Hourglass, the start of your turn deals three damage to all enemies, as well as, oh, I hate that it's offering me escape plan and bullet time, but the one I want, the one my heart wants is backstab because I wanted to make this aggressive build. I, the, the, the key to the win is to believe in me. I'm not telling you to believe in me. I'm telling me to believe in me. I would never presume so far as to tell someone else that they should believe in me. I don't believe in me. Why should you? Eviscerate is interesting. Again, it's a discard synergy card, but we don't have any discard synergy to set up for it yet. Uh, it would cost one less for each card discarded this turn and deals eight damage three times, so 24. Unless that costs one or zero, I don't really want to play it. So for the sake of my openings, I would really appreciate if I could get the gambling chip, which is at the start of each combat, discard as many cards as you'd like and then draw that many. Because that would mean that my... Number one, I can curate my opening hand. But number two, it would mean my sneaky strike is already active. And I can get a hell of a lot of block on my first turn just by discarding everything for the tough bandages. That would be really good. Oh, we could also pick up an Acrobatics here. Acrobatics is actually like a relatively aggressive uh, draw card. It comes pre-upgraded and it discards a card. So it is draw four cards, discard a card, gain three block. It's pretty good. So 11 plus 12 is 23, plus 4 is 27. So I can kill the back line of this turn if I focus entirely on them. Okay. One of the big problems with Sneaky Strike is it's not decreased in cost if you've discarded a card this turn. So I can't play Terra before Sneaky Strike. I still have to play Sneaky Strike first. It ruins a lot of ordering things. All right. Well, late plans. Start of your turn, retain up to one card. Bane deals seven damage if the enemy is poisoned, deals seven to gain. And Fluid Movement is the new card from Replay the Spire. It's a power for one energy. Keep up to five block between rounds. I believe the upgrade is eight. It is. I will take none of these. Looking for aggressive cards. Oh. I hate that I've seen Ninja Scroll here as well because now I can't get it. Start each combat with three shivs in hand. So with the Ring of the Snake, it would mean my opening hand is seven cards and I have three shivs. That would just be nice. Nice damage. Um, Panacea is gained two artifact exhaust. It's also already upgraded, courtesy of our Toxic Egg. We could get two copies of Skewer. I don't want any of these, to be real. I really don't. Let's take a defense. That is to say, let's take a defense out. Um, this fight is going to be hard. I'm actually concerned I may need to use a rest. You know what? I'm going to rest and just let Gremlin food upgrade whatever. And Grem upgraded a... Mm. All right. I feel bad about that now. I'll save that backstab for later because it doesn't do anything here, right? The block is going to prevent any of it. Mm, should have done that in a different order. I would have been able to play the Sneaky Strike. Okay. Okay. 
I'm pretty glad that this build got Terra early on because that's one of the things that you sometimes miss out on in your typical aggressive silent decks. You just never get the... You just never end up finding Terra, and as a result, you're dealing 50% less damage at all times. It's a bit rough. It's fine if I don't perfect the fight. I was not really going to. This isn't the kind of deck that perfects fights. Okay... We And we murder next turn indiscriminately. Get him! Get him! Alright! This is interesting. We have Atom Bomb here. Deal 60 damage, apply 3 poison to all enemies. That poison's insignificant. It's just about the 60 damage, basically. 75 and 4. It is exhaust. See, if I take this, I am effectively making a bet that I am going to get an energy relic after this. So I'm going to take it. Damn it. Okay. Atom Bomb is currently uncastable, and I do need extra energy in this deck so I can play more of my cards. I already have some extra draw to support it. Pandora's Box is Transform All Strikes and Defense. Not taking that. It is interesting in that any of them that transformed into a skill would be immediately upgraded by the Toxic Egg. Busted Crown. Gain energy at the start of each uh, turn. On card reward screens, you have two fewer cards from which to choose. Which is a problem, because we need more aggressive cards. And we have the Toxic Egg, so there's a lot of cards that... The Toxic Egg as well as the Top Bandages, so there's a lot of cards I would just definitely pick up. Calculator Gambler, for example. And then there's the Relic that makes people stop watching my videos. Uh, I'm afraid this one is for me. I kind of got to do this. Runic Dome, gain energy at the start of each turn. You can no longer see your enemy in tents. So that means the little numbers above the enemy's heads... I can't see them. So I have to use my experience and knowledge with the game to determine what I believe my enemy will be doing. And I'm okay at doing that. I'm not garbage at it. I'm not the world's best at it either. I'm okay. Usually on the first turn. Eh, good thing I didn't talk yet. <clears throat> because I was definitely not going to say anything that contradicts what happened. Attack potion, as well as the numbers. Oh, I'll buy two potions. Got liquid bronze, as well as fairy in a bottle. Fairy in a bottle is when you would die, heal to 10% of your max HP instead and discard this potion. Handy. We get a doom potion, a poison potion, and a fear potion immediately after. That's sad. I. Who's our boss on the end of this floor? It's the champ. You know what? We're going to take the Doom Potion. The Doom Potion is destroying an enemy after 10 turns. We can stall against the champ. Sundial, every three turns... Sh every three times, rather, you shuffle your deck, gain two energy. We have a relatively thin deck, as well as a lot of card draws, so we should be able to trigger that relatively often. Uh, this one's unfortunate. I don't really want any of these right now. Thank you very much. So I've got to upgrade the Atom Bomb as well as Terra so that I can play Terra before the Atom Bomb. Okay, we've got an Elixir. Exhaust all status and curse cards. Not necessary. Hulk and Dagger is just a nice card. It's a good card. It's six defense, and it gives you two shivs, and those two shivs are zero damage, uh, zero damage, zero energy, four damage exhaust. But I think the best thing about it is that when you play Cloak and Dagger, you play three cards. 
I'm gonna take a single malaise and I'm mad that I've taken it because I really wanted this to be an aggressive deck. Eight short of being able to pick that up. Add a shiv, not capitalized. This is a new card, by the way, Hidden Blade uh, from Replay the Spire. Add a shiv to your hand and draw three cards. I'm going to take the pen nib. Every 10th attack you play deals double damage because a lot of the time that is just going to insta-kill an enemy for me. Dreamcatcher, whenever you rest, you may add a card to your deck. Yeah. All right, I'm going to use my vulnerability potion here. Because this fight could go on for a very long time. I could have told you what the enemy was going to do there. And decided not to maliciously. So the enemy has two different things they can do. They can do 21 damage straight up. Just a big one hit for 21 damage. Or they can attack you for 6 by X. Right? And X starts at 2 and increases every single time they use that. So they'll attack you for 6 by 2. And then 6 by 3. And then 6 by 4. And then intermittently they will use their uh, 21 hit. However, if you weaken them as well as decrease their strength by five, which is what I just did with my malaise, the six multiples will be zero times whatever. So it doesn't matter that they hit you. Uh, the correct play there would have been play as many attacks as I possibly can before I kill so that I can increment my pen, uh, pen nib. We get Matroshka. The next two chests you open contain two relics, excluding boss chests as well as an explosive potion. Uh, I'm going to take a Phantasmal Killer. It's already upgraded, and it could be interesting. I'm going to here choose not to use Acrobatics because I desperately want to get in my next hand. Atom Bomb. Because that's 225 damage. Dag Spray is actually quite a good... Uh... Especially upgraded. It's, it's it's some AoE that we desperately need. So I put the malaise on the frontline target because it means that frontline target is not going to hit me for a very long period of time. And I weaken the back line because just in case they attack, I don't want them to deal that much damage. The front line attacks with zero. The back line, beautiful. That's what they usually do. They usually hex you. So what they just did. Now the hex is whenever you play a non-attack card, shuffle one dazed into your draw pile. I'm actually incentivized here to not attack. Damn. Am I interested in using an explosive potion here? Yes. Because I want to have my pen nib for the first turn of the next fight because it might just insta-kill an enemy for me. So I didn't want to use any attack cards there. All that attack is another really, really good AoE. And they're actually really necessary. Okay, I'll atom bomb the back line and then backstab. This is why I held onto my pen nib charge because that enabled the atom bomb there to be a kill. Juzu bracelet, regular enemy combats are no longer in canon in question mark rooms as well as garbage. Just a, just a lot of garbage. Beautiful. So the front line has the ability to defend. The back line has the ability to buff both of them by two strength or to buff both of them by two strength or to heal them by an indeterminate amount. Okay. And you can not, there's no huge pattern to what they do, so I can't really tell you one. I'm going to play everything here because I want to try and get as many of my pen nibs done against this boss. Okay. 
Upgraded Terra is really interesting. Sadly, I already have one in my deck. All right, I'll upgrade this Terra. Now, the problem of the fight we're about to go into is if I get this enemy onto half of their HP, they're going to purge the Doom effect. So I have to be very, very careful, basically to not damage the champ. That malaise is going to be really handy. It's going to buy me a lot of time here. So I just need to live seven more turns, basically. I'm using the Neutralize as my only attack that I really use because it is going to help me defend myself effectively. It's applying some weakness. I'm only playing the Phantasmal Killer for fun, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could open up with 225 damage right now. Actually, hang on. I've got a plan. We have two turns now. Uh -uh. Okay, never mind. My plan was to try and draw Atom Bomb and use that for a kill because it would have double damage from Pen Nib as well as double damage from the other source, the Pen Nib, and it would have also had the double damage from Phantasmal Killer. So it would have done, I, I believe they stacked, so it would have done 300 damage. And it was also against vulnerability, so it would have done 450 in a single hit. An attack potion? Sure. I can totally take a bullet time, like a single bullet time, because we have other draw that we can use first. And yeah, we can we can get a pretty good effect out of a single bullet time. Hmm. So there's Honey Jar, which is draw one more card each turn, retain up to one card each turn. Extra choice on card reward screens, but you cannot skip rewards. I believe this also used to give an energy. Because I remember I liked it a lot more before. Hmm. Uh, there's also Cursed Key, which is the one we're going to take, which is gain an energy at the start of each turn. Whenever you open a non-boss chest, obtain a curse. Uh, as well as Black Star, elites drop an additional relic when defeated. I kind of want to turn this into, like, all... Uh, like, double-double damage atom bombs. If that's at all possible, that's that's the archetype I want to try and build here. You know, play with a new card, that kind of thing. Uh, ooh, yikes. Well, everything's dying this turn. It's just how. Without the Atom Bombers, huh? Like a Fire Potion as well as... We don't really run our hand out. And if we do run our hand out, we don't want Expertise because we won't be able to draw after it. Right? We don't have a bunch of cheap cards, which is what Expertise is used with. Ah! I mean, receive two Madness. They'll both be immediately upgraded, so they will cost zero. And they are a skill, a random card in your hand costs zero for the rest of combat. So sure, if that hits, you know, Atom Bomb. I mean, this is kind of garbage, but whatever. It's the best defense we could summon. Cool. So on the first turn, the Orb Walker has the ability to deal 10 damage or 15 damage. If they deal 10, they put a burn into your draw and your discard pile. 
but they gain three strength every single turn. So they just get more potent over time. I could totally take a another acrobatics here, considering that I have the bullet time now. Mm -hmm. Sure, fight for a relic. Don't mind if I do. Not really what I wanted. Right, can I get an attack? Slice, you gave me something that is naturally zero cost? Mm. We're not friends, friend. I couldn't draw my atom, uh, atom bomb or bullet time. Oh, I'm mad. Okay. Well, at the very least, we killed regardless. Ginger, you can no longer become weakened. That's pretty damn handy for us. I don't think we need another AOE. We've got one of each. <laughs> Travel immediately, the boss. Oh, thank you. I'm good where I am. So I've got double damage on my first hit, so I can just kill with an atom bomb right now. Oh, and it did get hit. Nice, at zero cost. Didn't think that was gonna happen. Okay, we're not gonna be in this fight for long enough to use the regen potion for you know, significant effects, so. That's okay. Frozen egg, whenever you add a power card to your deck, it's upgraded. Ooh, sneak up, that's that's new. Gain one intangible. It is innate, exhaust, and ethereal. What's, it's, I can't look at its unupgraded version. Um, I'm more interested in getting another backstab, to be honest. One intangible. It's innate, it's exhaust and ethereal. It costs one, though. So effectively, like, a lot of characters... A lot of characters. I say a lot of characters. But, like, there's a lot of effects that are just really, really defensive on your opening turn. There's Anchor, which is a, like, a common relic. Just gives you 10 block on your opening turn. There's also the Red Mask, which gives one weakness to all of your enemies on your opening turn. There's Boot Sequence, which is a zero cost, exhaust, gain 13 block on your first turn for the defect. Because it's innate as well. Um, I think I would take Sneak Up if it was zero cost. Or if it upgraded to be zero cost. But it's already upgraded and it's not. Taking backstab. I wanted to discard a card there because, well, I mean, we have the tough bandages and I wanted to get a lower cost. Okay, we've got a Phantasmal Killer now. Sorry, a Phantasmal Killer. We've got an Atom Bomb. An Atom Bomb, sorry. Uh, beautiful. And now I've defended myself so I can kill. All right, Energy Potion. Gain two energy. Probably not worth it. Take another dose. Duplicate a card in your deck. I think I need to duplicate the Atom Bomb. I think it is a win condition. I'm tempted. Well, I'm tempted to open it because we'll get two relics from Matroshka. Sickly. At the end of a turn, lose three block. That's not that bad. Uh, that, that's obviously a new curse from Replay the Spire as well. Tag bags. Shops have all three kinds of sale tags. Sale tags can appear on colorless cards and on sale cards are cheaper. Uh, the, this is, I like, I like, I like this. I like it a lot. Obviously not right now because I don't think I have another shop afterwards, but I, I do like that a hell of a lot. We've also got Vajra. Start each combat with plus one strength. We'll be in this fight for long enough to get the regen potion active, so we'll use that. Now, this enemy has a negative effect called slow. So for every card we play this turn, it will take 10% more damage from attacks. So our goal 
is to play as many cards as we can before we play the Atom Bomb. So if I use my Survivor to discard my Strike and then Sneaky Strike, I'm, I'm basically trying to figure out, do I have a way where I can hit Atom Bomb with my Madness and make it the last card that I play? And I do. I do actually have the ability to do that. <laughs> nice. I've also got double damage for the next turn. And there's my Atom Bomb as well as a Terror. <laughs> yeah, 273. That's a hell of a lot of damage. And now we have a Pen Nib. Every 10th attack you play deals double damage. We also have Bag of Preparation at the start of each combat. Draw two additional cards. I'm actually really excited to see that. Between it and the Ring of the Snake, our opening hand is nine cards large. That's pretty potent. Okay. Here's the dagger spray there. Uh, two of those work for that kill. If I defend here, then I can miscount and have to spend too many resources killing one of you. Awesome! Well done, me! Thankfully, it's not really going to change the outcome. The outcome was never really in doubt. Ah, uh, Toxin Wave. Was this... Was this made weaker? I think it was. This is a card from Replay of the Spire as well. Apply four Necrotic Poison to enemies. So Necrotic is a interesting change to this. It is a powerful poison that deals two damage each turn, but doesn't last as long. So every single time that Necrotic triggers, if it still works how it used to, it halves the remaining necrotic poison on the enemies. Uh, I remember the poison dart days. That was uh, that was good fun, actually. Really enjoyed myself there. Uh, I don't need any more AoE, so I'm not even going to take that out either. Do I want a event? Or do I want to rest? I actually want to rest. And I don't want any of those. Okay, all right. Let's have a look at this. Uh, we definitely need to play a bunch of stuff before we start. A bunch of stuff. Ooh, not that much stuff if we can avoid it. Okay. Yeah, because we've still got Terry in here. I've discarded a card, so Sneaky Strike is going to be good. But we should backstab beforehand because then Sneaky Strike will deal a bunch more damage. The enemy never attacks on turn one. I could defend or not defend. It doesn't matter. They always self-buff on turn one. Oh, not self-buff. They always do either self-buff or... Yeah, no. That's that's my bad. I should have not been wrong, I guess. Um, that's my alarm telling me to go to sleep. You go to sleep, alarm. <sighs> Told them. Ah, yeah, the second hit can either be huge or tiny, and unfortunately, we got the huge second hit. Snack or, I, uh, snack or oil, become confused, draw two cards. Probably never going to use that. The only cards it would really benefit in my deck are the Atom Bombs, and the Atom Bombs leave my deck very, very quickly. It is pretty important we kill as early as is humanly possible here. Okay. Sneaky backstab. Then we'll atom bomb the back line, then backstab strike. Fantastic. Delays. Uh, you know what? I actually don't want to take as much damage as I would take this turn, so I'll use the explosive potion there. Question card on future card reward screens. You have one additional card from which to choose. I will take another atom bomb. Hmm. Uh, but there is no future card reward screen. This is it. So... Rest. Ooh, backstab got upgraded as well. Nice. Don't need to take any of those. All right. So basically the game here is how best can I set up for an atom bomb? So let's try and increment our attack counter.
So, best case scenario, next turn we have a single attack. Uh, Terra. Damn it! This is really bad. I can only play two attacks next turn. Uh, two things next turn. And I don't have my uh, double damage anymore. I'm still just going to try and set up for that ridiculous turn. Because this enemy also has a purge mechanic where they get halfway through their HP and then they do bad things to you. And I don't want that to happen. Do I go for the swag points of dealing a ridiculous amount of damage with a single attack? Because that will take a long time. I could just bullet time here and then double atom bomb for the kill. Or get extremely close and then kill with the atom bomb next turn. It's unfortunate. Really? The atom bomb isn't here? Good thing all out attack kills. Well, okay, so as it turns out, unbeknownst to me, I would have had Phantasmal Killer in that hand and not Atom Bomb. So two turns later, I would have been able to do the combo I wanted to. Sadly, I couldn't have known that. 953 damage. Not that bad. Not that great, but not that bad. For the moment, my name has been around. The name of the game has been, damn, dropping bombs like it's Guernica served 20 years Air Force United States of America. My technical ma <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyhow, hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.